Have you ever noticed that most skiers on the ski slopes are not really having much fun? They're just going downhill, turning left and right, trying not to fall. Skis are pretty hard to learn. They're cumbersome, heavy, and difficult to control. That's why back in the 80s, some skiers decided to use short skis and enjoy skiing their own way. And today, ski boarding is on the rise again. Most ski boards are less than 100 centimeters long. The most common lengths are 90 and 99 centimeters, but you can also find ski boards as short as 65 centimeters or as long as 120 centimeters. What's the difference between ski boards, snow blades, ski blades, and short skis? There's no difference, really. These are just different words for the same thing. This sport isn't big enough yet, so there's no widespread agreement on the official term. The term ski boards seems to be the most common in the US. It was created back in the 90s and used by companies like Atomic, Elan, or Fisher. Ski boards usually take pride in their wide shape, inspired by snowboards, which makes them a bit more suitable for powder, although you can also find narrower versions of ski boards too. The term snowblades was supposedly popularized by French brand Salomon in the late 90s for their short skis. And ski blades is just another word for the same thing. Here's a fun fact. Many Europeans still remember the first mass-produced short skis called Bigfoot. So that's a common term used in Europe. And to make things even more confusing, there are two new popular terms used for short skis. Snow feet ski skates. However, snow feet ski skates are not ski boards. They're skates for snow. This completely new winter sport called ski skating resembles skating on snow rather than skiing with short skis. Snow feet ski skates are especially popular among roller skaters or ice skaters. The modern history of short skis started in the 1970s when Niesel with their Bigfoot introduced their 65 centimeter skis with foam core and toes as tips. Then, Atomic came in the 80s with Fiegel skis, which were supposedly used by mountain climbers to enjoy skiing downhill after reaching the mountain peak. The potential of these fun skis was recognized by other big ski producers later in the 90s. The highlights of ski board innovations were Mikroski, created by Kent Kaisweiler, who redesigned the snowboard construction, Climax with their carving performance, or head, introducing the release bindings for the first time. Today, ski boards seem to experience a renaissance thanks to a decline of snowboarding. More and more people enjoy ski boards since they can use them with their snowboard boots. The recent boom in skating and the whole 80s and 90s nostalgia is helping to revive ski boarding too. When buying ski boards, consider these key dimensions, length, width, radius, tip and tail height, and bindings type. Length. Shorter ski boards, 60 to 80 centimeters long, give you more freedom of movement that feels a bit like inline skating with all kinds of twists and tricks. They're great for quick and short turns, jumping over moguls, very lightweight and easy to transport. They're also great for kids thanks to the size. On the other hand, they're not as good for powder. You'll also get less front back stability and they're not made for long, deep carves if that's what you're looking for. Overall, if you want to try something new, have fun above all, and love the freedom of movement, short ski boards are the best choice for you. Longer ski boards, more similar to long skis, still offer freedom of movement, but not as much as shorter ones. They're great for powder, easy for landing in snow parks, and perfect for long, deep carves. The most common lengths are 90 and 99 centimeters, but you can also get ski boards as long as 120 centimeters. If you just want a bit more freedom and fun, but a similar experience to regular skiing, longer ski boards are the best option for you. In fact, I believe most skiers would enjoy skiing with these short skis much more than with long skis, because it's easier, less restricting, and much more fun. Did you know, the length of skis being determined by your height is the biggest lie of the ski industry. This applies to Olympic racers, but for us, 99.99% of skiers who go skiing to have fun in the mountains should only consider how much freedom of movement and fun you want to have. Most of the ski producers claim that longer skis go faster 
and have more stability at high speed. This is true, but only in a straight line. Snow blades are highly maneuverable. The shorter the skis, the more freedom and fun you have. It's just that simple. Width Wider ski boards perform better in powder, while thinner ones are better for the ski slopes. For most of you, it's probably best to choose something in between, which means tip and tail width around 11 centimeters and waist width around 8 or 9 centimeters. Waist width is particularly important. The thinner this is, the easier it will be to turn the skis on the edges and perform carving. Radius The smaller the radius, the smaller and faster the turns. Aim for a radius between 4 and 8. The shorter the skis, the smaller is the radius, usually. Tip and tail height. This is usually 4 to 5 centimeters. The higher the better for ungroomed terrain, but as long as it's not below 3, you'll be fine. Tail height is also important for skiing backward. Bindings. There are three main types of bindings. 1. Regular ski boot bindings. These are the standard release bindings for most skis, and they contain ski brakes. They're safe and easy to use, but they're also the most expensive option and don't fit shorter ski boards. 2. Simple, non-releasable ski boot bindings. Because ski boards are so short, some of them can't be made with regular ski boot bindings. That's why a new, simpler version was invented. Non-release ski bindings are cheaper than regular bindings, yet they're easy to adjust, tool-free, lightweight, and usually include safety leashes for secure attachment. Non-releasable bindings won't pop off easily when you fall, which is why they're not made with ski boards of over 100 centimeters in length. From our experience, these simple bindings are good enough if you're not trying to win the Olympics. 3. Snowboard bindings If you're a snowboarder or hate the uncomfortable plastic ski boots, which most skiers do, these bindings are right for you. In addition, snowboard bindings give you even more flexibility while skiing, if that's what you're looking for. Most brands offer to amateurly mount the big, clunky snowboard bindings on the ski board. However, there are unique, custom-designed snowboard bindings out there, easily adjustable to snowboard boots of any size, with an anti-slippery surface for perfect shoe grip. These special bindings were developed by Snowfeet Team, so you won't find them anywhere else. Shape Camber shape is the most common. It's great for easy control and an effortless carving experience. Camber plus rocker shape Unique camber plus tip and tail rocker shape gives you easy control, fun twists and tricks, effortless carving experience, and a smooth ride in ungroomed terrain. Construction most ski boards have a similar construction to regular skis. Some are made with a plastic core, but most are made with high-quality wood core. Look for centered graphite base, durable top sheet, anti-vibration tapes, and reinforcing layers to make sure your ski boards are not some cheap Chinese counterfeits. Snowfeet Ski Boards At Snowfeet, you can choose from three different short skis based on the length. 65 centimeters, these are short enough to skate, yet long enough to ski. 90 centimeters and 99 centimeters. These models are probably the ones that are best for most people. You will have a very similar experience to regular skiing, but more freedom and fun. 120 centimeters. This model is made for all the skiers who love regular skis, but are tired of how clunky and restricting they are. These are basically the ultimate perfect skis, you really don't need anything longer to enjoy ski resorts to the fullest. There are also 44 centimeter long models called ski skates. Is it hard to learn? Are ski boards suitable for beginners and the elderly? Ski boards are actually perfectly suitable for all types of skiers. They're easier to learn and control. Plus, they often provide greater stability due to their wide base. You don't need to put so much pressure on your knees in order to stop. So, short skis are great for the elderly, and people with knee injuries, too. On the other hand, ski boards can bring much new experience to pro skiers who can enjoy fast turns or explore new tricks. Conclusion In general, ski boards provide more fun and freedom of movement, they're lightweight on your feet, and for many skiers, easier to ride as opposed to cumbersome long skis. 
Let us know which one is your ski board of choice, and we'll see you on the slopes.